Today, I'm going to show you how to repair an aged photo in Photoshop. Hey there and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find me on Flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And in today's episode, we're going to show you how to take an old beat up photo and make it look brand new. To start off today's episode, I'm going to show you how to get rid of some dust and scratches that tend to develop on aged photos. Next, we're going to take a look at our sky, which is really dark and discolored in this photo. We're going to go ahead and lighten it up and then fix our color. And to finish today's episode, we're going to do color correction on the entire image, taking away the color cast on the original photo. All right, guys, we got a great episode. Let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop. All right, guys, here's our image for today, which was actually submitted by a fan named Erica. She asked if we could remove the color cast in this photo. So we're going to do that and a bunch more. Okay, well, let's go ahead and start off by analyzing our photo. Now, anytime we're bringing like an aged photo into Photoshop, we've got a lot to do here. Now, my goal is to make this look as best as possible. We're not going to make it look exactly like it was a modern photo because, well, for one, it's not very large and we don't have a ton of detail here in our people's faces and things like that. So with this sort of thing, generally the goal is to make it look as best as you possibly can. So let's go ahead and outline some of the things that we can work on in this image. All right, starting with our sky. Now we have all this texture in our sky. This is like dust and scratches and basically all these little spots here, this can develop from film over time. So we're gonna show you how to remove that. Next we have this huge area in our sky which is both dark and green. So we're gonna go ahead and show you how to do that as well. All right, we also have like lines here, like discoloration, there's a line here, there's one running over here. Okay, we're gonna be using our healing brush to get rid of that. And then we just have an overall color cast. You can see the shadows in my image here, they're just a little bit like red and kind of like magenta, especially around the edges. All right, so we're gonna finish up our image with fixing that color cast. Okay, well let's go ahead and start off with our sky. So we're gonna delete that layer. Now here we've got our background layer. I'm gonna go ahead and create a copy of our background layer. So to do that, simply click your background layer and drag it to the new layer icon, making a copy. And then we're going to get rid of all of our dust and scratches. To do so, we're going to go to filter, down here to noise, and over to dust and scratches, which does exactly that. It gets rid of the dust and scratches on your image. All right, now here in this filter, I can just simply click and drag up to get a good idea of what it's actually going to do. Let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit. There we go. So here's basically the after, and if you click on preview, you can actually see it on the entire image. Okay, now we have a choice here. We're going to start off with a threshold all the way down to zero and a radius of one. Now, as I bring my radius up, it's going to start basically blurring areas and that's Photoshop's version of getting rid of dust and scratches. Now, you can also add threshold, which is basically going to protect some level of detail in your photo. Okay, so the higher the threshold goes up, the more it's going to try to protect in your photo. So what I would recommend is starting off with a really low radius, okay? You want your radius to be as low as possible. There's no reason to go up anywhere near this level. So we're gonna start off with a radius, let's try four, okay? And now we're gonna bring our threshold up to start protecting our detail. Now we wanna find kind of like the best of both worlds here. We'll bring our radius up a little bit more and then our threshold up to match it. All right, now our threshold up this high, we can still see there's a lot going on here, here in our sky. So let's go ahead and bring our threshold down just a little bit more. There we go. And that looks pretty good. So a threshold of six or seven looks pretty good in this case. And now we're gonna try bringing our radius up just a little bit. And again, the farther you bring it up, the more it's gonna blur. The farther you bring it down, the less it's gonna blur. And in this case, really my goal is to get rid of this stuff in the sky. So I'm gonna bring my threshold up one point one more point, all right, and here at a threshold, yep, a radius of about four, it is getting rid of pretty much everything in my sky. So that's where we're going to stop. There's no reason for me to go all the way up here, okay? All that's gonna do is just continue to blur everything out and then I'm losing a lot of detail. All right, so we're gonna go to four and hit okay. All right, now let's make this visible and invisible. And you can see it did a great job on our sky, but it's also reduced a lot of detail on my image, especially my subjects, and we don't want that. So I'm gonna hold Alt or Option, click on our layer mask, which is going, going to make a black layer mask, and then we're gonna paint with a regular brush. Here we go, let's go ahead and choose white on our 
paintbrush here. We're going to paint with this regular brush on our layer mask, which is telling this layer basically to only be visible in the area that I'm painting. All right, so let's turn this off and on. There we go. We've just got a white layer mask here on the top, making it only visible in that area. All right, and I think that looks great. Now, what we're going to do, let's go ahead and uh, fix a couple of these like little, you can see we have a line here, okay, and one line here as well. So let's go ahead and fix those. We're going to make a new layer, and I'm going to hit J for my healing brush tool. Now, within the healing brush tool, you have a spot healing brush tool and a regular healing brush tool. The spot healing brush chooses your sample point for you, and the regular healing brush tool makes you choose your own sample point. So we're going to start off with our spot healing brush. It's a little bit easier to use. So basically, we're going to go around our image and continue to paint right over here on the areas that we want to fix. Now, the nice thing about the spot healing brush tool that I really love is you can have content aware within your healing brush tool, which if I come to an edge like this, it's going to do a really good job maintaining detail here on the edge. Sometimes it just makes it up for you, which in some cases can look pretty funky, but for the most part, it's going to do a great job. All right, so there we go. Let's go ahead and paint up there. And we're going to paint right down there to remove that as well. All right, that looks pretty good. And right over here as well. All right, so just kind of getting rid of a little bit of that texture in our sky as well, because we're going to change our color in just a minute. But there was a little bit of texture remaining. So we just turn this back off and on. So I went ahead and got rid of the texture in the sky. And while I was at it, I got rid of some of the texture in the overall photo as well. Maybe some of these little spots there as well. OK, that looks great. So as of now, we've gotten rid of the texture in the sky and some of these textured areas on our image. All right, now let's go ahead and fix our sky. So our sky is suffering from two separate issues. One, it's a lot darker than it should be. And two, it's the wrong color. So let's go ahead and take care of our lightness first. Now, to do that, I really want to see my image in black and white for this because I, I'm going to just be fixing lightness and I don't need to worry about color at all. So a quick tip here, we're going to go ahead and create a layer, go to new adjustment layer, and we're going to go to black and white. All right, let's hit OK there. Now, I don't need to change any properties here. This is just seeing my image as black and white, which helps me to correct this light area here in the sky. Okay. Anytime you're correcting lightness, it can be very helpful to have your image be temporarily in black and white. And when we're done, we're just going to delete this black and white filter. OK, so let's go ahead and do what we can to our sky. This black and white layer, we're going to keep, keep visible. Next, we're going to go to Layer, down to New Adjustment Layer, and I'm going to go do our, we're going to create a Levels Adjustment Layer. Now, this time, what I'm able to do is click here in our midpoint, and I'm able to drag this to the left and the right. There we are, which is going to allow me to simply lighten up parts of my image. Now, in this case, it's going to lighten everything. So I don't want that. We're going to hit Control or Command I on our layer mask here. And then I'm going to use my gradient tool to just try to lighten up the sky. So let's go ahead and hit G for the gradient tool. We're going to be painting here with our foreground to transparent gradient. So right now, my foreground color is white. And that's going to go to transparent. So let's hit OK there. So basically, on my layer mask, I'm going to be painting from white to transparent. And I'm going to be painting with a radial gradient. So if I click and drag out, you're going to see that's what it's going to do. All right, now you can bring, change your opacity based on how much lightning you actually want to do. So you can see as I click and drag out there, there we go, with the lightning with an opacity of 100, it's going to kind of lighten everything. There we go. That looks pretty good. And now I'm going to bring my opacity down just a little bit, and I'm going to paint black on my layer mask, just so we don't affect areas like these trees and whatnot. All right. So I'm using my gradient tool here because it does create like really large, smooth gradients, which is great for areas like skies. But if you would rather just use a brush tool, you can do that too. Let's show you how to do that. So for instance, if I duplicated this layer, here's Go ahead and fill the layer mask with black. We could just paint with our brush tool here. Just choose a soft edge brush. There we go. And go ahead and try to correct all this area just using our brush tool. OK, so really anything you feel comfortable with. 
Again, the goal here is to get this dark patch in the sky to be a bit lighter. All right, there we go. And that looks pretty good. So we've taken the dark patch and made it a bit lighter. Now, this is all we need our black and white adjustment layer for. All I wanted to do was to be able to see the dark levels so I could go ahead and match those and make them a bit lighter. So let's go ahead and delete our black and white adjustment layer and then color correct the sky. We're going to make our curves adjustment layer. Let's just do our finishing touches here just to make sure it's exactly as light as we want it. That looks great. Now our black and white adjustment layer, you can see that was really helpful because now I was able to color, I was able to lightness correct all that area, but I didn't have to worry about color at all. So let's go ahead and delete our black and white adjustment layer. There we are. Now we're going to go ahead and color correct this sky. So we're going to go to layer down to Sorry, here we go in layer, I was on image. We're gonna go to layer, down to new adjustment layer, and then over to hue saturation. Okay, now with our hue saturation, I'm gonna click on this colorize button, which makes basically the entire image the same color. All right, well, let's go ahead and choose a blue that's in our sky here. I'm gonna to have to guess for now, but I'll be able to fine tune this in just a little bit. Okay, now click on your layer mask and hit control or command I to invert that. And then basically, I just wanna paint this right over top of the sky. Now this is really easy to do relatively because it's a sky. It's going to be a blue color. Okay, if I had to color correct a person, this would be a little bit more difficult. But in this case, it's relatively easy because we're just making the entire sky the same color. There we go. And let's just pull this in just a little bit here as well. All right, turning that off and on, we can see now the entire sky is turned blue. And in this case, I might want to bring our saturation down just a little bit. We don't need to have it be so heavily saturated. And here I can choose, for instance, if you chose the wrong color, you could simply choose the right blue quickly and easily. Okay, great. Now you can see we do have our image in the background is not perfect. Like, you know, the trees are a little bit like light towards the edges and a little bit blue, um, much better than when we started but not exactly perfect. So if you did want to create, for instance, let's try creating a new layer here. We could use our uh, clone stamp tool. So S for the clone stamp tool and sample areas right over here. Okay, let's go ahead and bring our flow a little bit lower. All right, I'm painting with a flow about 70% now. And we can actually sample areas and just kind of like paint them up here to fill in and fill in any areas we need to. All right, and this is totally optional again. Don't feel like you, ha you need to do this sort of thing, but if you wanna just fill in a little bit more detail in the background, this is how you can do it. All right, great, looking good. So just a little bit more detail there on the top of the trees. So I think our image looks pretty good for now. So we've reduced a lot of the dust and scratches on the original image. We went ahead and turned it black and white and then used that to lighten up our sky. And then we created a hue saturation adjustment layer to go ahead and color the entire sky is blue. And then I went ahead and painted a little bit of the treetops. So our image is almost done at this point. The last thing we wanna do is some overall color correction because this image has like changed color over time. So we're gonna create a color balance adjustment layer to do that. So we're gonna go up to layer, down to new adjustment layer, and over here to color balance. Okay, now I love using color balance adjustment layers for correcting color like this because I can separate out my shadows, midtones, and highlights. All right, let's go ahead and start off with our shadows. Now you can see in this case, our shadows have a bit of blue in them, okay? And a little bit of red. So here's our blue yellow slider. I'm gonna click here and just drag this to the left a little bit. Okay, and you're gonna see it's gonna re just reduce the amount of blue in our shadows. And basically the goal here is just click and gra drag until, well, until basically it looks neutral, until your colors look good, okay? And if you're not sure like, I've been doing Photoshop a long time, guys. So if you're, I'm, for me, I'm able to be like, okay, there's some blue in the shadows. If you're not able to do that, don't worry about it. You can simply drag any of these sliders left and right and just kind of look at it and see, does this make it better or worse? You know, does this make it better or worse? That, that's kind of the whole idea here. All right, so in this case, that looks pretty good for our shadow levels. There we go. So we've brought, took, taken away a little bit of the red. We've taken away some of the blue. There we go, and I've added just a little bit of green as well. All right, so turning that off and on, there we can see that's just our shadows. Next, we're gonna jump into our midtones. All right, 
And I'm not going to adjust these too much here. We're just going to go to the left and the right till we find our, our nice balance here. OK, and then we're going to jump into our highlights. Maybe add just a little bit of cyan and a little bit of blue into our highlights. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Now, our sky color here, I think it's a little bit too saturated still. It's a little bit too much, so we're just going to take that down just a little bit more. OK, and we're looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and turn our color balance adjustment layer on and off so we can see that's our color balance for the entire image. Go down, this is a little bit of the work we did on the trees. Next, we have our color correction in the sky. Next, we have our lightness correction on the sky. OK, we have all of our dust and scratches we took care of. And this is our original that took care of the texture. All right, guys, let's go ahead and check out our before and after. Here's our image before and the after. All right, guys, that's all there is to correcting an aged photo in Photoshop. Just follow these key steps. First, you want to take care of any type of scratches or textures that exist on your photo. To do this, simply duplicate your background layer, go to Filter, down to Noise, and then Dust and Scratches. Now, make sure you don't use a radius that's too large because that's going to really blur your photo. The goal here is to bring your threshold up just a little bit to protect some of the detail in your photo and then bring your radius up to follow. Then I use the Spot Healing Brush to get rid of additional marks on our photo. Next, I wanted to correct the lightness in my sky. I made my image black and white using a black and white adjustment layer. This made it so I only saw the lights and the darks. Then we used a levels adjustment layer to simply lighten our image, painted black on our layer mask, and used our gradient tool to paint white on our layer mask over top of the sky. After I corrected the lightness in the sky, I went ahead and color corrected it using a hue saturation adjustment layer. Make sure to click on that Colorize button. It's going to allow you to change the same color throughout your image. And to finish this photo off, we used a color balance adjustment layer. Here we're able to change the colors of our shadows, midtones, and highlights separately. That's it for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you love Photoshop and photography like I do, go ahead and click on your screen right about now. We'll send you free Photoshop and photography episodes every single week. And if you have an idea for an episode or a question about today's episode, leave it in a comment right down below. Thanks so much, guys. I'll flirt you later. Bye, everyone. La, 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 la. In a minute, take in a magical ride. In Photoshop. That was not a great intro. Next, it's time to color. Next, we color corrected the sky. Next, I. All right. After the lightness. After the light, that's all there is to it.